This is the biggest summer of the series so far. We've just completed two years as Birmingham's director of football and I am determined we will give Thomas Letch, our assistant manager, a squad good enough to compete for the playoffs next season. Greetings, my excellent friends, and welcome back to Club 2, part 13 of the Director of Moneyball. I'm Kirk Sheridan, and the great upgrade has begun. We finished last season in ninth place with 69 points, and I've taken a look back at the league table over the last four years to see just what it will take to get into the playoffs. This year, 79 would have been enough. The year before, 79 would have done it again. The year before that, 79 again. And the year before that, 79 points would have been enough to qualify qualify us for the playoffs so that is our number one goal for this summer we need to improve the squad by enough of a margin to gain 10 more points and we've got 8.7 million pounds and 260,000 pounds a week in wages to do it it's the 16th of June, the transfer window has only been open a week, but Lewis Warrington has joined us from Everton. He comes in as our second best central midfielder, and we managed to make a tiny sum of £15,000 from Andre Wisdom, who has joined Salford just before his contract expired. I'm starting to find it difficult to acquire players who are definitely going to improve this team, though. Isaac Mabea was one player who I'd offered a contract to. I was hoping he would join us as a right wing back with huge potential, but he's decided to extend his current contract with Liverpool. And most disappointingly, we've lost out on Maurice Krattenmacher, who would have been a phenomenal striker for us, could play up front or in attacking midfield, even better than Nemecha and Salcedo. But I wasn't bold enough to offer him time as an important player. I thought we could get him as a regular starter, but no, he's off to FC Dallas. And we really could have done with him. I've spent a lot of time planning the squad for the season ahead. And up front, we are seriously lacking in depth. Salcedo is is really our only top quality natural striker. Plange is also a natural striker, but Nemecha and France, the other two options we currently have, are naturally attacking midfielders. But they're going to be fighting it out with Roddy McGregor and probably a returning Latrell Belnavis. Now, you will not have seen Belnavis so far this save. He's been out on loan a lot, but he's potentially Premier Division standard, and I'm committed this year to rule number one of Moneyball prioritise your own youth team above transfers. So he's got the determination, teamwork and work rate that we're looking for, for our club DNA. A little it's all bit lacking in strength, but he's got pace and stamina and can pass the ball as well. So with his potential, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. In defensive midfield, of course, Hinshelwood will be departing us. So that's going to give an opportunity for O'Shea Ellis to come back off loan and step into the team. Fight it out with Arahan, Gubua and Warrington for those defensive midfield spots. Left wing back was sorted. Fleming was incredible last year and Zagre is a very, very adequate backup. We definitely need cover at right wing back though. And in central defence... We've got four great first team options, but the youngsters, unlike up front, I'm a little nervous about. Zach Willis is lacking the passing, the teamwork and the work rate that I would ideally be looking for. Pendleton similarly lacking in those key attributes, but his potential is also quite a long way off. So that means with loanies returning and leavers leaving, I make it when everything is said and done, we'll have about a 19 man squad. At the bare minimum, I need two central defenders, a right wing back and one striker or attacking midfielder. And once we've prioritised plugging those weaknesses, we then go looking for something special. But before we get into all that exciting transfer business, I wanted to take an opportunity to reflect on my career so far. It's been four years now that I've played as the director of football, two with Worthing, two with Birmingham. I've still put no effort whatsoever into becoming a good coach. I'm all about scouting and player recruitment, as you know. And in my overall career stats, I've still got no matches played. Not one in this entire save so far. Four years, not one single match I've taken charge of on the pitch. I have, however, bought 58 players for nearly £11 million in total and sold 44 for £60 million. Quid. So uh, definite money ball profiteering at work here. This is good. This is good. Not surprising to see that I'm highly regarded for managing finances and also well known for signing under 23 players for the first team squad and to develop for the future. So even the game now recognises that I am all about the money ball and it definitely feels like I'm making my way up the managerial or director of football ladder. 
started in the National League South, finished sixth. We won the league at Worthing in my second season as director of football there with the phenomenal Ben Watson in charge as assistant manager. Let's, let's take a look back as well. Let's see how Worthing have got on this season. Romeo Beckham has signed for Worthing Football Club. Well, I suspect that's probably doing wonders for their shirt sales. Number seven Beckham on the back of a Worthing shirt. Yes, please. They've still got Gennardo and Wright there, who I brought in. Hughes, Tizard, Carroll, Craig, Samuels. A lot of players who I didn't really get to see the best of. And it looks like they finished 18th in the National League. Yeah, got as high as 9th early in the season, but dropped off towards the end. And Chris McPhee's still there. Chris McPhee took over from me, so he's stuck around quite stubbornly considering he's only got a 29% win ratio. Oh no! Ben Watson is no longer there. Ben Watson has moved on. Nicky Law is now Worthing's assistant manager. So where's Ben? Unemployed? Went to Tranmere as their assistant manager, then was caretaker and has been out of a job ever since. Ben! No! I'm feeling a real sense of solidarity here and want to offer him a job, but... His attributes for the level I'm working at now aren't quite there. I'm sorry, Ben. I'll try to find an opportunity for you, but it's going to take me a bit of digging. Just hang in there. Because we've, we've done a great job here at Birmingham, building up the staff. The coaching and recruitment team were in an appalling state when I joined two years ago. We've now got arguably the best coaching team in the division and one of the best recruitment teams. We've come a ridiculous way. I've got to be honest, after a couple of years, I'm just starting to wonder what the future might hold. I don't know. I'm not sure if I want to move on, but it's probably worth looking. Life at Birmingham is tough with the financial restrictions that we're under. So there's nothing jumping out here. Sampdoria? Yeah. A couple of Bundesliga teams. Man United. Man United? And Everton. Everton, you say. Everton who have just been relegated from the Premier League. For the first time ever. Everton who have a stadium with a capacity of nearly 53,000. They've got a bank balance of 38 million quid. And oh my word, and a loan debt of nearly 500 million compared to our 74 million. I thought we were in a bad way. So they've got superb training facilities compared to our great ones. We've got excellent youth facilities. So do they. They've got excellent youth recruitment compared to our decent. I mean, it, it kind of feels like the situation at Everton is a bit like what I walked into at Birmingham to a factor of 10. Ludicrous amounts of debt, but a huge opportunity to make the most of these facilities and the club standing. And they've just been relegated from the Premier League. They must be loaded. Let's just take a look at this job advert. Right. Sign players under the age of 23. Yeah, can do that. I'm known for this. Play entertaining football. Wait. A wage bill of £2 million a week? We've got 260000 Oh, this has got to be worth putting my name forward at least. Come on. This is an opportunity to move on to another higher reputation club. How amazing would it feel to be the director of football who can finally put together a coherent recruitment policy at Everton Football Club? Right, my job application has been received. Well, that was unexpected. I thought we were just going to take a trip down memory lane there and uh, we might have just completely changed the future of the save. Well, the Everton business probably will all come to nothing, so I'm concentrating still anyway on making sure that the future for Birmingham is as bright as can possibly be. We've offered a fee for Renzo Malanka, currently at Monza, who had three phenomenal years in Chile before moving to Serie A. Hasn't started a lot of games, but that average rating when he was in Chile makes me think he's going to be a very tidy player. And he could possibly become the best central defender at the club. So that's one potential central defensive slot filled. I've had a bid rejected for Clemens Rydell, who's another centre-back, but on reflection, it turned out that he's probably not going to get a work permit. So we're moving on from that one. So still on the lookout for at least one more centre-back, that right wing-back and a striker or attacking midfielder. Right, 24th of June, just over a week later, and we've got a lot of loanies due to return soon. And I do think some of them are going to be ready to step up to the first team. So we've already talked about Belnavis and Willis. But I'm looking at Frank Tatum, Jose Carvalho in particular, and maybe Julian Lammer, who are others who I might want to bring into the first team to give them some minutes and basically speed their development up. Pedro Bacalio, though, one of the signings from last summer, his development has basically just stalled. He's going to cap out at a three-star player, so I will be looking to move him onto a new home. 
And it's like the press are just trying to push me ever so gently towards Everton. I'm getting this report through that Birmingham stature has grown a little bit over the last 12 months. Liverpool have retained their status as the most reputable club in England. But Everton have taken a sharp decline. Well, you know I like a challenge, don't you? It's the 25th of June. The season has officially ticked over. So we're now officially at the start of our third season with Birmingham. And the media are thinking we're going to finish 15th. The board expects a top half finish as a minimum, and I really want to push for those playoffs. So there's definitely work to be done on squad building. It is proving really tricky to find first team upgrades, though. Malanka is still the only player who we've currently got on the table. Oh, goodness me, and later that morning, Everton are actually inviting me to interview. They've clearly been reading my profile page as well. They think that I might be an acceptable fit for their ambitious vision for the future because of my strong commitment towards signing first team players no older than 23. This could be a perfect, perfect mixture of club, situation and director of football, I have to be honest. Well, their chairperson, Bailey May, is trying to offend me straight off the bat, though. He's asking why my managerial career thus far has lacked variety. What do you want? Relegation? No, I don't fancy that on my CV. Thank you very much, unlike your outgoing manager. So uh, I'm happy to say that I've shown loyalty to every club I've managed. And why do I want to move on? Now, this is a very good question. When I was contemplating Worthing or Birmingham, I didn't know if I wanted to move on, but I have to be 100% honest. This Everton opportunity is really exciting. I've been wanting to test myself at a slightly higher level with bigger budgets. Taking a club like Everton that's just been relegated and turning things around for them, oh, this could be a phenomenal story. So I want to take the next step in my career. And yes, I'm sorry all of those Birmingham fans out there, but I want it to be with Everton. Just don't tell the Birmingham board I said that just in case they don't give me the job. I can definitely promise a strong dressing room atmosphere and absolutely a great relationship with fans as well. Now, how do I feel about working with their current director of football? Not great, I must be honest, but this is another one where it, it's worth making a promise for the sake of 180 days. That's all it's going to be. That's what the situation was when I joined Birmingham. Just needed to work with their director of football for six months and then I can move him on. So yes, I'm happy to work with him for six months because I know clearly from the fact they've been relegated I'm going to be able to do a much better job. Any changes to backroom staff? Well maybe a small budget. There might be some people I want to bring with me. Thomas, Lech, maybe. And what's their vision for the future? Sign players under the age of 23. Yes, no problem. Wage budget, grow reputation? Absolutely. Don't sign old people. I can get on board with this. Gain automatic promotion to the Premier Division this year. No pressure. And basically, don't go back down again. That feels perfectly acceptable. And if I wasn't able to achieve that, I'd have to consider it a failure. Yeah, they want me to win the league title. Great. And a... Oh, £48 million pound transfer budget. I'm not entirely sure how they're doing that when they've got nearly £500 million pounds of debt. I won't worry about that right now. That sounds fine. And £2 million a week of wage budget. Honestly, this could be a fun summer. <laughs> oh my word, and I'm now odds on favourite for the job. Right, I don't know if that's true. I don't know how long I've got left. Clearly I have some important business to take care of. Right, we've just arranged a friendly with Worthing. I don't know if we'll get to see it. I've gone as quick as I can. It's the 4th of July. Nine days time. We're doing it at their place. Hopefully, it will make them a decent chunk of money in gate receipts. The Malanka transfer is really dragging, so I've now made an offer for Jacob Greaves as well. He would become our record signing, but it's only two million up front, and he would be joining from Hull as the best defender we've got at the club. Great with the ball at his feet, really strong mental attributes, excellent physicals. We've only really got David Nemeth at the moment who can play as a ball-playing defender, so I think for our style of play for Thomas Lech, Jacob Greaves could be a huge upgrade at the back. Okay, 29th of June, and the team are back for their pre-season training. Let's welcome them back. I'm going to tell them that we're pushing for the top half of the table. That's what they signed up to last year. I know I'm going for the playoffs, obviously. And I also want to let them know about that promise to give youth a chance. This is absolutely one of those key rules of Moneyball. And yes, the team are absolutely delighted to hear that as well. Brilliant news. 
that has got them off to an amazing start absolutely topping out all of their morale and then 34 players to send on a training camp including a lot of the youngsters brilliant oh my goodness me my friends Everton are asking me to make some backroom staff changes I think we all know what this means wow what a transformational moment in this save from a debt ridden free falling Birmingham City to a debt ridden free falling Everton football club what could possibly go wrong? Oh my word, they don't have an assistant manager. I was immediately going to look and see what the state of their current managerial setup is. No youth development head, no assistant manager, light on coaches. It looks like they got rid of most of their backroom team. It was Lampard. Lampard stayed with them for over four years in this game world. I'll be taking over from Frank Lampard with a media prediction that they win the league. And goodness me, look at that. I think that's a parachute payment. They had about 40 million quid in the bank last time I looked. It's now up to 105. Well, there's, there's a lot of offers in for some of our Birmingham youngsters while we're waiting to hear back from Everton. Lee Allen is not one of the players I've mentioned potentially keeping around, so we'll let him go out on loan. Zach Willis, though, I want to stick around. Pendleton, I don't think, though, has the long-term potential, so he is one we'll let go out on loan. Ellis, though, I want to keep around, and Eubank, definitely stay out on loan. Oh, Hinshelwood, Harris, van der Heiden, and Bennett all now return to their parent clubs. Well, I say parent club. Bennett's parent club will always be Birmingham. Yes, he's moved to Manchester City now, but he will be welcome back here any time. Gregory Tanko now has moved to Argentina. Joshua Williams also moved on. And this is it. This is it. Everton are offering me a two-year contract. Clearly got loads of faith then. Great. They think I'm the ideal person to replace ex-manager Frank Lampard at the Bramley Moor Dock Stadium. Well, you know what, Everton? I genuinely think I'm the ideal person too. Huge news, my excellent friends. Huge, enormous, save-changing news. Everton Football Club, hire yours truly, Kirk Sheridan. I think next episode's going to be something really quite special. I hope you've enjoyed what you watched today. It's been another roller coaster. Thank you for joining me on this adventure at Birmingham City, at Worthing previously, and I really hope you're as excited as I am about the next chapter at Everton Football Club. If you've enjoyed what you watched today, please drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn your notifications on to find out the second the next video drops. I have a funny feeling you're going to want to check it out. Be excellent to each other in the meantime. I'm Kirk Sheridan. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.